Right, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, objects and local space. I uh, had an email from a viewer, so thank you for that. Um, just asking what's the difference between object and local space and how can we use them in effects. So yeah, let's get started. So um, what do we mean by a space? Well, all a space is, in this terminology at least, is uh, it's a coordinate system. So um, if we look at this floor, this box, um, it has a position, uh, zero, 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 this one doesn't have a position, this one has a position. They all exist in different places in world space. And so if I move this up, you can see um, the values in Z are changing. Um, and that's the position in world space. So it's just a way of referring to where things are. Um, and yeah, um, but if we consider this cone, if I move this around, um, I'm moving it. So we go. If I'm moving this cone around, I'm still moving it in world space, that's all fine. If I rotate it, still in world space, if I rotate it this way, it's still in world space. Um, sometimes that's useful, it's always referring to the world positions here in the, um, in the transform, but because this object has a point, this has a direction to it, wouldn't it be useful if we could move it along its direction? Well we can, so you might have seen me click it just a minute ago. Um, and this option up here changes between local space and world space. Um, and so if I turn that on, now that Z arrow, that blue arrow, which is for up, so up in the world space is moving up in the world, um, but up in local space or object space, which are two terms for the same thing, um, is along the point of the arrow. So you can move things, so that's now moving in local space. And you can see that these coordinates are still in world space. Um, you're moving along there in local. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's basically it for the difference between object and world space. But how can we use them? Well, if I go to this material and look at this cube, we have oops, just a simple color, fine. And then I've plugged the parameter into world position offset. Good later now. Um, so if I move this up in 50, 50 in blue, this is world position. So it's moving the object by this mount in world position. Um, if you don't know what world position offset does, I've got some other videos on that. If you look at the shader maths, um, that explain all those things there. But here, particularly, um, these values, they're in world space. So here we can see the world space coordinates. They're all color coded to match these values. So if I do 50 in red, now it's moving along the red axis. Um, but if I rotate this, you can see it's not moving in local space, it's only moving in world space. So if I start here and rotate it, what means if I want to move it up this way? Well, we can do that. We can do it with a transform vector. So right click transform. For some reason this is called transform and this is called transform vector. Don't know. There we are. Um, so what do we do with that? Well, if we plug into the transform vector and then plug into our world position, this is a little bit tricky. So this pin here is looking for world position or world space data. Um, so we're transforming to world space and we want to transform from local. So this is kind of the wrong way around in my mind. I'd prefer, it makes more sense if it was local to world, but actually what we're doing is this data is in local space and then we're converting it to world space because this is what we're is looking for a world space input. Um, so we just apply that. Now, if I rearm it back to the world, if I go up in blue again, it's going up, that's fine. If I rotate this cube and then go up in blue, it's now moving along that local axis. So we've taken our, our offset data um, and we've moved it to be using local space or object space um, instead of world space. So now we can move things along their own axes um, as opposed to in world space. Depending on what you're doing, you might want to use both. Um, so what other spaces we have? Well, in here there's also tangent space. If I do that, get some horrible looking there. So each of these faces has its own tangent. It's the way it's facing. Um, if I do that on an object like this that has hard edges, it's going to explode. Each of those faces has now moved a little bit along its axis. Um, and so that's kind of sort of local space per face, if you like. So each of these faces is moving along its local. If I bring in a sphere, this is going to have smooth normals. So if I apply the same material, hopefully it just expands because all those 
vertices in the corners are, are facing the same direction so we can actually get this to shrink and expand as it's smoothed. Um, also really useful, you might have seen a similar thing or a similar result done this way instead. So here I do the same. I'm just using a single value now and not a, a, a full vector uh, and I'm multiplying by the vertex normals. So each of these uh, objects, I think I can see vertex normals in here here we are. You can see they're all pointing outwards, so it's moving each of those verts along that direction, um, which for the sphere you get uh, expansion, kind of like scaling up. We do this. You can see here the normals in the corners here, they're not welded together, they're not smooth. So the top face goes up and this face comes out. Um, and we're getting some flickering on that. If you want to know more about the flickering, I've got a video on object bound scale. Basically the, uh, the renderer doesn't realise how big the object is. Um, because we've done some things with the vertex shader, but again, check out that video. Um, so yeah, so that's different. Another space we can use is tangent space. Um, there are some others in here. I've not used them. View space and camera space. Well, I'll go back to using this one. Let's offset this back to zero for now. Now view space. Well, it's which way we're looking, basically. Um, so if I wanted to move this across in red, that's now moving across in camera space. And you can see as we move the camera around that does some weird things but um, where this might be useful for example is if you had an object flying towards the camera. You can do that. Whoop, if you do the values like this. So if I get this right, view space I think is a plane where the camera is. So you can see that sphere is moving towards the plane not towards the centre of the camera. I change it to camera space this should now move straight towards the camera, I think. Like I say, I've not really used these. Um, different axis. Hmm. Nope, not sure what camera space does. But view space you can do. Oh no, wait. Ah, I've converted view space to camera space. That's probably not very useful. Uh, let's do view space, camera space to world space. Let's see if that does what I expect it to. So you can see, you can definitely convert all these different things. No, it's basically doing the exact same thing. So I'm not quite sure what the difference between camera space and view space is. Um, maybe the thing tooltips will be helpful. View space relative to the camera eye. Camera space differs from camera space in the shadow passes. Ah, maybe it's something to do with the shadows. Not sure. Anyway, um, like I say, never really used it, but world, local, and tangent do come up all the time. So. Um, that's how we can kind of convert with that and use that in our in our materials. Um, last thing, yeah, no, actually, just do one more thing, quick off the fly. Um, rotate about axis. So this is a really useful node. Um, it will rotate the object in the vertex shader. So we need some inputs for it. So the position is well position. That's saying which of the um, these verts, what's the object we, we're currently editing. Um, pivot point, well, there is a pivot point node. This is just a little function. Um, and you can see here it's using a different kind of transform. This is transform position rather than transform vector, but it's doing the same thing. It's transforming 0, 0, 0 local to world. So it's taking basically the origin of this object because the 0 local is, is the pivot point. It's, it's the object origin. And that's what we're getting is the pivot point. So we do that. Let's do angle. Let's just do a parameter for this. And then we need rotation axis. Now this is where it gets interesting. So if I just um, parameterize this for a second. Axis. And let's say we'll use blue. So we're going to use Z. So we're using the up axis. So we're going to be rotating around Z. Now if I actually rotate this you can see, hopefully at least on the on the cube, it's spinning around the, the world up, isn't it? It's spinning around. I move that. Like because the object's been rotated, yeah, it's spinning around the way the local up is. If I change that to a local axis, uh, transform, change from this case, I want to go from well to local, I think. Doing these things on the fly. 
And now hopefully, when I spin that, it's spinning around its local axis. If I go back to local, so now although the cube's rotated, it's still going to be spinning around that long axis there. Oops, maybe the scaling doesn't help. Second. So if I rotate this. I've got this the way around. Like I say, transforming spaces can be a little bit interesting. So yes, I want to go from that local to world. There we go. That's the effect I'm trying to get. So now you can see it's spinning along its axis because we're working with the local axis um, as opposed to the world axis. Um, cool. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, definitely some interesting kind of animation the tech effects we can do with with world position um, you do start having to think about vectors and spaces and directions don't be afraid to get out a bit of paper sketch it out or just play with it just try it out there's lots of options but hopefully one of them works and once you get used to it um, you can say there's nothing wrong with a bit of trial and error um, so what other things can we do um, well if I take the screen position so screen space so we've got screen space as a as a vector that we had earlier um, and we were moving things in screen space which is yeah maybe not that useful um, but we can also map things to screen space so if I just plug in the screen position node what this is you can see here we're getting effectively a UV square mapped over our viewport um, so you could use this as a way of doing texturing. So we're now going to be using texturing in screen space. So if you had like a post process effect, like water running down the screen, something like that, you could do that with um, the screen position UVs. Um, and that would then map to that space. So they're all just different spaces. You could possibly use it for something, some weird effect, I don't know. Something maybe that fades out around the edge of the screen. If you were doing some kind of blinding flash or something like that, who knows? Um, but yeah, you could do that by using mapping in screen space. Um, so yeah, that's all the material stuff. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense. So the last thing I want to look at is particles. So basic particle emitter, just the default, haven't changed anything to it. Um, and you can see here, the initial velocity is in Z, which is up, which it is. That makes sense. Um, we're not in local space, because that's the default. So when I move my emitter, the particles move up but they're trailing behind so they're not moving with the emitter when the emitter moves if I turn on local space you don't see any different here but as this moves the particles are moving with it so if you had some kind of I don't know animated um, magic gauntlet or something like that you'd want that to be in local space because then when it's attached to the character the effects all move with it if you wanted some kind of like trailing smoke or, or fire that would probably happen not in local space so that the particles don't move with it. Um, and if I just rotate this, you can see the initial velocity, this is happening in local space. So although the up arrow now is in um, in Z, it's, or the, the initial velocity here is in Z, while it's in the particles local Z, there we are, which is this way, um, we do have an option for in world space. And now that no matter how I rotate this particle, it's always going up. So you can do your velocity in world space. Really useful for things like embers, stuff like that. So if you had a, like I say, a fire attached to a person and they're rolling around on the floor, the embers always want to go up. Fire always wants to go up because that's coming from heat. Um, so as this is rolling around, the source of the fire is moving, but the uh, direction of the fire is always the same. And you can either have this trailing here, which is not using local space, or you can have them in local space. Um, so even though the particles are in local space and attached, the velocity of the particles, or the initial velocity of particles, is always in world space. Um, so yeah, so that's the different um, effects you can have with world and local space. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, as always, questions, comments, etc. Let me know. Um, and yeah, and I'll see you all next time.